Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, as you know, is a prolific teacher and a good one. And is a prolific writer as well, uh, from decrees to documents to encyclical letters. Uh, his production is uh, amazing to, to me, just on the level of, of volume. But it's the content, uh, too, uh, obviously, that uh, is uh, just astounding and, and profound. But his communication isn't limited to those official moments. There are very unofficial moments for which the Pope has also been, become famous for. A few years ago, for example, on an airplane where he likes to talk to uh, reporters uh, in, in the context of a, of a line of questioning on the Church's teaching in regard to uh, uh, homosexual orientation and same-sex relationships and, and uh, uh, and the Pope responded to a, a question during that discussion uh, with a, a response that, that uh, was like the shot heard around the world. Who am I to judge? And it was welcome news for many. And in fact, the, the, the Holy Father is encouraging us uh, to uh, put our, always put ourselves in, in other people's shoes and to remind us, as he has often in this pandemic time, remind us that we're all in the same boat in terms of our human uh, uh, fragility and, and our, our human brokenness and, and sinfulness, and that we ought to have a, a, a certain openness uh, and attentiveness to, to everyone, uh, everyone. And, and I think that's where the Pope uh, was going with that. Very recently, just uh, within the last week or so, upon his uh, return, his return trip from a papal a pilgrimage visit to Budapest in Slovakia on an airplane again with reporters and a line of questioning in terms of uh, Eucharistic discipline, uh, specifically in regard to the, the bishops here in the United States. So the reporter was uh, uh, mentioning and asking, uh, as you know, Holy Father, in the USA, after the last elections, there was a discussion among the bishops about giving communion to politicians who have supported abortion laws. And there are bishops who want to deny communion to the president and others who hold office. Some bishops are favorable. Others say not to use the Eucharist as a weapon. What do you think? And what do you advise the bishops to do? And have you, as a bishop in all these years, publicly refused Eucharist to anyone? Pointed questions. It's a lot to answer. In, in a partial answer, he. Uh, because he didn't have time, I'm sure, he said, I've never refused the Eucharist to anyone. I don't know if anyone has come, in other words, presented themselves to him uh, in, in these conditions. And he continued a theme we've heard before. Communion is not a prize for the perfect. Communion is a gift, a present. And it is the presence of Jesus Christ uh, in and for the community. I would add in this context, and then the Pope has said this as well, it's, it's nothing original on my part, that communion is medicine for the soul, medicine for the sin-sick soul. And in a pastoral approach to politicians and, and others who, Catholics, who uh, might advocate actually, believe it or not, for abortion, the taking of innocent life and, uh, and, uh, and promote uh, legislation or uh, fight legislation that is trying to mitigate or even eliminate the, the, the effects or even the occurrence of abortion in, in our midst. Uh, my problem with politicians that are in favor of abortion and supporting it would be that if they approach the Eucharist without a contrite heart, that they, they I think, too often approach the Eucharist with those attitudes in their hearts and those actions in their political life uh, with no purpose of amendment and uh, no contrition, um, and no uh, humble approach to the Eucharist as, as someone who is in need of healing. It seems to me that they see it as a reward, that uh, as a badge of, of, uh, of virtuous living, uh, a way for them to state publicly and to show, I'm a, I'm, I'm a faithful Catholic. They'll even call themselves that. But that's not what I want to talk to you about today. And I've talked enough already. The Pope continued in this uh, in-flight reflection. 
on the issue of abortion. Abortion. It's murder. Whoever has an abortion kills. No half words, says the Holy Father, and he continues. Take any book on embryology for medical students, the third week after conception, all the organs are already there, even the DNA, clearly. It is a human life. This human life must be respected. This principle is so clear. This is Pope Francis speaking. To those who cannot understand, I would ask this question. Is it right to kill a human life to solve a problem? Is it right to hire a hitman to kill a human life? Scientifically, it is a human life. Is it right to take it to solve a problem? That is why the church is so hard on this issue. Because if it accepts this, it would, ac it would be like accepting daily murder. The head of state told me that the demographic decline began uh, in those years when there was a strong law uh, on abortion, that, that such a strong law that six million abortions were performed and this left a drop in births in the society of that country, where it's happened here in the United States. China is certainly experiencing the, uh, the dire consequences of, of their own uh, birth control practices with abortions, uh, uh, freely chosen and uh, often, too often, uh, imposed by force. I mention all of this, it's all connected. This week, this Friday, in fact, October the 1st, the Feast of St. Therese of, Les of Lesseau, uh, the patroness of our beautiful Diocese of Fresno. It is also the beginning of Respect Life Month. And we've already begun this beautiful time as well that many churches, uh, Catholic and, and non-Catholic too, are participating in called 40 Days for Life. It began on September 22nd. It will go through October 31st, All Hallows' Eve, Halloween where all across the country, here in Fresno too, in front of abortion clinics, and wonderful prayer warriors are, are out there in front and praying and courageously witnessing and kindly encouraging those who would be walking in and peacefully, I might add, uh, encouraging them to choose life. Uh, there's so many ways to do that. Uh, call your local parish, get in touch with your local Respect Life uh, group and organization. Talk to the Knights of Columbus in your, your area and just ask, where are, are you praying and where can I help? I have a few suggestions on that. Just Google very simply, Right to Life of Central California. And immediately on that website, you see opportunities. Uh, and opportunities to sign up for 40 Days for Life here in downtown Fresno on Fulton Street at a, 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 a women's health clinic, an abortion clinic. Uh, our wonderful prayer warriors are out there every day, and there's a sign-up list, and there are lots of, uh, lots of empty spaces on that sign-up list. So from now until October 31st, go on that site and, and sign up. There's another sign-up for the Fresno Fair on, on the website, and you say Central Life, of, uh, I'm sorry, Right to Life of Central California promoting the Fresno Fair. Well, not really, but at the Fresno Fair, Right to Life of Central California will have a booth. Uh, we'll, we'll have a, a place there where people can come and, and look at literature. And that's a real courageous witness uh, in the midst of our, our culture and society. Uh, and uh, that's a real courageous thing to do, to sign up for that. But I encourage you to, to do that as well. In this respect, Life Month about to begin we are reminded that we have choices. I sometimes remind people that uh, the Catholic Church isn't against choice. In fact, we are pro-choice, that is pro-life. Choose life, choose to do the right thing, choose to do the kind thing, choose to do the loving thing. This has been a struggle for us human beings for as long as we have been human. That's a pretty long time and from a beautiful passage from the Old Testament, the book of Deuteronomy. As God's holy people are about to enter that promised land, that land where their future is, that land of hope for them, Moses knows, he's been told by the Lord, he's not going to be part of that entry into uh, the, the holy land, the promised land. 
that the, he's done his job. He's about finished, but he's not quite finished. He is told to address the people before they enter the Promised Land. This is right before Moses dies. And he says to them, I call heaven and earth today to witness against you. I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Choose life. Yes, we're pro-choice. Choose life, then, that you and your descendants may live by loving the Lord your God, heeding his voice, and holding fast to him. For that will mean life for you, a long life for you to live on the land which the Lord swore he would give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The promise of the land, but that's not our promise. Our promise is infinitely better. It's the promise of a life, a life that begins here on earth and a life that never ends because our true homeland is in heaven. God bless you and those you love always and in every way.